many sisters, divorced sisters, you know, many sisters, as I mentioned in the beginning, who are, you know, who left marriage late, sometimes not their own fault, are finding it hard to marry. So what, you know, what practical solution can we provide for these sisters? And, you know, I leave it, I leave the question open and, you know, you know inshallah, you think about the answers. So coming back to the thick point, you mean, yes, you can stipulate that and if the brother accepts, then, you know, he should, he should live by that. But however, if after marriage, a brother wants to get married again, then really, he does not have to seek the permission of the first wife and the first wife cannot fuse or cannot kind of prevent him from marrying again. But however, if she, you know, if she decides that she doesn't want to stay in the marriage, that is her choice. That is her choice. Wallahu alam. See, what happens if, like, um, two sisters or two brothers propose to the same person, like a brother and sister? Like, proposing to the same person? Yeah. Okay. In the, in the case of a woman, it's not allowed for a man to propose over the proposal of his brother. Yes, if, so if a Muslim has proposed to a woman, and you know about this proposal, then it's haram for you to propose to that same woman. And also it is, it's, it's not allowed for her to accept other proposals until she or her family have decided on that proposal, either by accepting it or refusing it. So if they've accepted it, obviously then it's haram for someone else to come along and propose. If they've refused it, then someone else can come along and make a proposal. So that is in the case of a woman. And, and that's clearly from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he prohibited that. Is that what you have in mind or, uh, or something? Two sisters proposed to one brother. <laughs> Okay. You're lucky. <laughs> yes, I was, well, I suppose how you look at it, you know, some brothers might think it, you know, lucky brother, but <laughs> sisters might not see it in the same way. Um, you know, ideally, brothers and sisters, you know, we don't want to create a situation where we create ill feelings for each other. If a sister knows that one sister proposes to her brother, then, you know, if you know, if you have that knowledge, then don't go and, you know, make an, uh, another proposal. To him, because that, will, that is likely to create ill feeling uh, amongst yourselves. So wait for the brother to decide on that, to say yes or no, before you make, make making your proposal. But it's not it's not strictly not strictly forbidden, because we know that you know man is allowed to marry more than once. You know, so he can marry more than more than once. So you know he could even marry those two that propose to him if he wished, and if they were happy with that. But if you know it's going to create uh, fitna, it's going to create ill feelings, then you avoid that situation. You wait until the brothers accepted or rejected that proposal, then you, you know, decide what to do after that, inshallah. Generally, you don't go to you don't go to a situation where there is haram taking place, whether it's you know alcohol being served or people are engaged in haram actions. Uh, you keep away from that place. And unless you can go there and change the situation, obviously if you're going to a non-Muslim, you know what, what to expect, so you cannot accept that kind of invitation. Even if it's a Muslim wedding where it's mixed and where music and so on going on, then you're not allowed to accept, go to that wedding unless you go there to tell them that it's wrong. Yeah, so, uh, but you know, in most cases, you know they're not going to listen to you, so you don't go. Yeah, so that uh, you avoid that situation altogether. You're going to briefly touch on some advice for, for the brothers and sisters if they if there's somebody in university they want to marry for what to do. Yeah, okay, Zakala have reminding me on that, yes. I mean, it commonly happens, you know, in university situation, many brothers and sisters, obviously you see lots of Muslims, and sometimes you may see, you know, brother or sister that you think, okay, I'd like to marry this, this person. I mean, that's, alhamdulillah, you know, it's a natural thing, there's no, no problem with that. But in terms of how you go forward is where we need to be careful. What, what you should do, ideally, in the case of a brother, is that you approach you find out who the sister's wali is, who her guardian is, who her family is, someone that you can approach. So you, you, know, you need to obviously carry out, do some investigative work and find out you know, who, who you can approach on that matter. And it's not acceptable that you go and approach the sister directly because it opens the door to fitna. Yes, it opens, opens the door and perhaps you don't know. Maybe the, fa- the family or you know, herself, she may not want to marry you. So you go to... You know, you, you go to a third person and you find out who you can approach and you go through that means, inshallah. Similarly, if a sister sees a brother that she's interested in or she like, she thinks she may want to marry, then she should approach her wali. Uh, speak to her wali and if that is difficult, you know, speak to someone who can speak to your wali on your behalf. Then, 
go and find ways of exchanging information. That is the best way, brothers and sisters. And that is the way, inshallah, avoids a lot of harm, a lot of, a lot of some of the kind of evil consequences that result of people, you know, directly making approaches. So try and avoid that. You know, try to avoid it and avoid the harms of what happens uh, if you, you know, directly start speaking to brothers and sisters. So really, uh, speak to a, a third person and uh, take it through that, inshallah. Don't do it directly yourself because it does open the door uh, to a lot of things. And sometimes, you know, you may start the kind of discussion and so on and it doesn't lead anywhere. You don't get married. And you've had all of this kind of contact and it only, you know, creates perhaps, you know, heartache, if you like, if you want to use that word. And also a lot of, lot of problems at a later time as well for yourself and for your families as well. You have to be realistic. You, you know, when you want to marry a person, you think, first of all, is that person going to be interested in you? Secondly, would that, is that person's family likely to accept you as well? You know, don't think that you're not just marrying one person, you're going into a family. Is that family likely to accept you? You know, don't put yourself in a position you think, oh, I don't really care about the family, I just, you know, I just want to marry the sis, or I just want to marry the bro, <laughs> you know, as brother and sister say. But you know, these are things you need to consider. Marriage is, you know, about building families. So really, uh, consider that, inshallah. Shouldn't we strengthen our imam before we get married, rather than think about our age? Similarly, isn't it unfair for sisters to be disregarded because of the age? Taking the example of Khadija, radiallahu anhu, First of all, with regard to the sisters being discriminated because of age, yes, it is unfair. It is unfair because sometimes it's not a fault of the sister that she's reached that age and she's not married. But this, I'm just telling you the reality, sisters. You know, this, the reality is that many brothers look for younger sisters and that when sisters reach this age, most of the brothers by then are married. You know, most brothers are married before the age of 30. So there are very few brothers who are left, you know, at that age. So, I'm just telling you the reality of what it is. Yes, it is unfair, but, uh, you know, we live in an unfair society and we have to uh, try and ensure that we don't, we don't put ourselves in, into that, in that kind of position. And, yes, Rasul, the Prophet said, married an older woman. There's no harm in that. You know, if a man is happy to marry an older, older woman, there's no problem. But I'm telling you that most men, you know, will say to you, if they're honest, that they want to marry a younger woman. And again, that's not wrong as well. You know, it's not, it's not wrong, it's preference, which, you know, Islam allows us. And also you need to consider, you know, the kind of maturity levels of, of people. You know, generally women are more mature than the men, especially at a, at a younger age. So, I find, you know, brother, young brothers who want to get married, but many of these sisters are much older. You know, some of these brothers are not perhaps as on the same level of maturity as these sisters. So, this kind of marriage, you know, what, what do you think is going to happen? So that's the thing, in terms of building your iman, you know, when do you judge that your, level, your iman is at a level of marriage? As long as you're, you, know, you have basic knowledge of the deen and you have basic practice, inshallah, you're, you're in a position to get married. So I don't think that's, that's a, a kind of a condition that you have to have a certain level of knowledge or understanding or practice before you can actually start, uh, start to think about marriage. If a sister doesn't want to get married at all, is she sinful? If the sister doesn't want to get married, I would say, you know, uh, what, what's the reason? Because it's naturally, a, you know, most people have a natural inclination to get married. If, for example, you have no, you know, kind of urge, then, then fine. But if you do have those urges, then, then you have to get married. You know, if you feel that you can protect yourself, you have no a need to get married, then, um, you know, it's no harm. But it's sunnah, it's recommended, it's encouraged that you do so. That's the answer, inshallah.